So what we see here is a, you know, widespread perspective, perspective that uh, right from our BPT, we used to tell that uh, what happens when you keep this machine? The one answer will come in the practical viva from every student, that is, it improves the blood circulation, okay? So, and then uh, that is physiological effect. Therapeutic effect is it will relieve the pain. How it will relieve the pain? Pain gate theory, okay? So in the pain gate theory, what this machine does, either at the substantia gelatinosa, okay, the C fibers or the A delta, which is causing the pain, versus A beta, which is actually taking this uh, stimuli, gate open, gate closed, all the stories we'll tell. What causes this descending inhibition, uh, uh, what is called as cortical endorphins, encephalins, the endogenous uh, opioids? They'll tell that every modality has that effect, endogenous opioids. Finally, the bottom line is endogenous opioids is because of the placebo. So we should know that patient believes in that machine, definitely endogenous opioids will be created. Patient believes that I don't need a machine, then without machines also the endogenous opioids will be created. So the ultimately it is the placebo which creates the endogenous opioids. Gate closing can be done by multiple methods. You want that peripheral relief. Counter irritation is one mode of relief. There is a pain from a region, we keep stimulus. That stimulus actually creates a diversion of the concentration. Or when there is pain, we just press that area, we squeeze that area. There is another stimulus, the pressure and the squeezing. So this stimulus is more powerful than the pain stimulus. So the receptors will be taking the pressure sensation, not the pain. You see that uh, in uh, among the tracts also, pain and pressure are carried by different fibers. So counter irritation is a common method which is used even in external applications. Even you can apply an analgesic cream and we use the stimulation electrodes for iontophoresis. We apply the analgesic creams and then we use the transmission uh, gel and then we apply the ultrasound as phonophoresis. So there are a lot of options that are available, transdermal delivery of medications through iontophoresis and phonophoresis. Iontophoresis is a big uh, scope of using the ions, different methods, uh, metals and ions, how we can use for different conditions. But we have lost this over the years that nowadays BPT curriculum, we read iontophoresis only for a bit of a portion for the viva, which ion, what effect it will have for wound healing, uh, infections, okay? Or it is for uh, uh, collagen reorganization, all these things. Uh, nobody practices iontophoresis, okay? Even phonophoresis. In fact, these two can be adding a liaison between you and the physician because there is medication that are delivered transdermally. So definitely the physician will also be interested in prescribing the external applications. So with that external application, can you use it for the betterment of the patient? Especially when the patient is in the stage where they have the pain disturbing their sleep, a elderly with the pain who is continuously crying in the night and disturbing other sleep, okay? Uh, various uh, problems are there, different types of spectrum of people, patients. So what we need to understand here is to see that as a clinician, because anybody can apply these machines as per the instruction manual on the patients. That is technician. You would have seen that in your own clinic. People who are sweepers, people who are cleaners of the clinic, assistants who are helping with the patients, they will slowly start applying the machine. 
So it's easy for anybody to learn the technical aspects of how we are using the electrotherapy. What is important here is what uh, Madam highlighted that last course, what we had, functional aspect. Functional aspects of electrotherapy. See, what is the function that we require? We want that uh, synovial fluid to be redistributed. That means, can this modality reach the synovial fluid? This is our question. Can it do anything to the synovial fluid? Can it do anything to the nitric oxide? We will think of these questions. But patient may not be comfortable with that machine and we just have to change it. Because nocebo we do not want. Outright. Madam was highlighting that the surgeon had referred that laser. Go to a physiotherapist who has the laser. Okay. It is not the patient's priority. This is the surgeon. Okay. Surgeon is having this thing that laser is only safer or commercially the laser companies have canvassed the surgeon that you insist on laser so that the physiotherapist will purchase that. Okay. So either way, it's a conflict of interest. It's very tough to, what is called as, it's a challenging one. We have been discussing about this therapist and physician, how to communicate, how to ensure that you can uh, change a treatment which is uh, given by a referring physician. Okay. And the same way, even a patient wants, but you feel that that is not effective. That is also a conflict. Okay. Nowadays, Google is there. Every patient will see that. And they will see that microwave is effective. They come to you. You say that you have short wave. They tell, no, no, no. Short only, short only. It is micro is very small. Microwave. So micro level, I will get better. Okay. They will tell anything. It's very tough to convince them. Sometimes you will have to use as per whatever they require. Blindly. These are the only options that are left with you. You just have to use what the patient asks or the surgeon asks. The other option is tell them, go to another therapist. Okay? Because who will do whatever others will want? I will do only what my examination tells. Okay? But the more sensible uh, communication, what you can do is to tell the patient, you want me to be responsible for your pain relief? Or you want the surgeon to be responsible? Or you want yourself to be the responsible? Relieves also your own. If the patient tells I am ready and sure that it will help, means give them. No problem. Because what we really want is a an ethical aspect of healthcare. What is the ethics that tells? We should not harm the patient. But if a patient thinks that harm only is the treatment, it is their choice. But contrary to whatever we are expecting, sometimes the patient will improve also. Because placebo is there. They believe in that machine. So you give that, definitely they are going to improve. You will be losing side. Okay, if you're arguing against the placebo, even a surgeon advice also becomes a placebo. Orthopedic surgeon, 20 years experience working in this big government hospital, he referred to me that that machine is effective. So if I use that machine, I am better. But the placebo will come there also. Ultimately, we have to treat the patient and the patient has to become better. Do not think of my knowledge is this much. Functionally, I can do that much. Okay, I can examine in depth and then I can uh, prescribe and the patient will recover in five days. You have a confidence. But yet, make sure that patient comes with a higher priority. What the patient wants. Because you cannot do a thing which is beyond the what the patient wants. Patient do not want a thing you cannot do. That clearly is stated in our ethics. So ensure that you follow the principle and apply the treatment. But keep the communication clear that you are believing that the treatment will work, 
so i am giving that don't tell that according to my knowledge the treatment won't work okay for example patient comes with the belief that laser therapy will work ask me to apply laser therapy if i don't have the machine of laser therapy i can refer to a physical uh, physical therapist whom uh, physio to physio reference is very poor nowadays see remember every, every physio cannot have all the equipments so another physio may be having that equipment patient can afford the treatment so refer to the other physio for the treatment alone tell them that come here for other treatments that therapist also should be clear that yes i have the laser unit so the patient is coming for the laser treatment patient is actually that other therapist dr chaitanya's patient i should not give advice other than the laser to that patient so everybody should maintain this boundaries and what is called as a professionalism what we are trying to tell is one therapist is wrong i am only correct or i will do a better treatment than the other therapist okay so these all things we talk to the patient and ultimately patient is going to get the placebo gets dissolved and they get an ambiguity whether i will improve or not instead of using the placebo for beneficial effect and recovery we have destroyed that placebo and created a confusion for that confusion we don't have a solution at all none of us can tell which therapist is better than another we have free webinars everybody take free webinars maybe free webinar is better than the other free webinars but we don't believe that certification course will be better in a aompt compared to the other courses we don't believe that even if a free webinar is better than another academy aompt free webinars are the best but aompt certification course is it better than the other we do not believe that okay so this is the situation which happens is a human tendency same way patient also so do not destroy the placebo just improve how much actively they can functionally recover for example we all know that recovery depends upon the activity because inactivity only causes the pain if everybody is physically active healthy lifestyle a combination of nutrition stress management all this there will not be any common musculoskeletal disorders at least neurological is also caused because of hypertension or ischemic heart disease as risk factors all this again are lifestyle dependent so remember that everything is because of our lifestyle which is a combination of physical activity diet and nutrition and stress management so ultimate solution lies in these three combinations modality should be used to guide the patient towards either of these three having a modality makes me relaxed take it okay because it's a stress management taking a modality makes me becoming active absolutely take the modality so you become physically active so that is the principle of functionally targeted electrotherapy what madam was highlighting that we should encourage the patient's contraction during the stimulation or uh, try to see that we can treat the patient in the functional positions not in the supine lying okay uh, the basic thing revolves around it is our decision yes the laser has to be given but what position i give the laser it is my choice nobody can tell that give it in supine lying only understood a surgeon can write apply the therapeutic ultrasound they can write pulse dar continuous also but they cannot tell the biomechanics because you are the physical therapist the movement scientist so when you use that muscle contractions you use the weight bearing you target the functional aspect functional position patient is doing a push up and you do the ultrasound give the ultrasound during the push up you can't even imagine the spectrum of functional integration what we can do then definitely you are breaking the 
what is called as the existing um, maladaptive rules that is making the patient to be sedentary making the patient to be dependent on the health care every time okay we do not want that we want everybody to be independent and physically active because if we are a patient we will prefer ourselves to be independent rather than taking the medications forever taking the modality forever going to a hospital where they tell that one month package you have to take the electrical modalities see corporate hospitals are run by our physical therapist they are outsourcing the department the actual commercial aspect is also controlled by a physical therapist who ensures that every patient who comes on day what is counted one hour to take package one package of what short wave ift ultrasound heart pack all combined treatments and each patient pays daily 500 to 1000 rupees per session and they come for 20 25 days because the therapist wants to show the income so that the 50 percentage of his profit will come which is also more corporate hospitals also want an annual target of income so they want to improve that so patient requires or not requires the inpatients are given electrotherapy which is two three doses in a day they'll be called to the department and they'll be treated many things are happening people who are doing the internship in corporate hospitals will know the truth and also the junior therapist who are working in the corporate hospitals will know the truth that in their interview itself attractive girls are appointed because these attractive girls will counsel the patient for one month package patient cannot refuse if attractive guy is trying to convince nobody will listen understood attractive girl tells woman also listens man also listens okay so they are sitting there only as a receptionist the therapist and they try to convince the patients to take up the package like how the vlcc the fitness center packages are there three months package 15 kg 20 kg package reduce reduction okay so and they also choose the trainer okay whom i want as a trainer all these are commercialized aspect and unethical bottom line unethical we have a big uh, enemy to fight those are the rackets they are all business rackets the aspects of these companies sponsoring the physiotherapy events the electrotherapy companies are sponsoring the physiotherapy events they are the eventual sponsors and all the leading legends who are on the stage will always be telling high power laser is the best because that unit when you purchase for 4 and 1/2 lakhs every therapist gets 45000 commission the 10 percentage commission so that means for every person who buys the high power laser 10 people buy i get 4 and 1/2 lakhs just sitting here if today i tell that high power laser from this so and so xyz company is the best and from you 10 people are purchasing i will tell that take the discount code from me so that you will get 10% discount so everybody will take the code and that code will give me 10% discount 10% commission okay company is making more than half profit so they give 10% to you 10% to me they we think the indians have the tendency that discount means ah we'll run okay uh, if i tell that the course is 5000 rupees you are getting a discount now it is only 3000 everybody will take it directly if i tell course is 2500 nobody will take it okay that is the psychology lot of things have to change uh, but what we can change from our within we can only initiate a process of change because we have the conscience that we don't want to be cheated by others then how can you cheat others can you keep your hand and take the stimulation for 5 days your hand okay whether you want to do it for the quadriceps or you want to do it for the neck 
will you take it even when you have pain have you ever tried taking the ultra therapy modality what you have always done is hot or cold only you would have tried the thermal you would not have tried the electromagnetic radiations because you think that why the tunnel any effect is there or not there whatever why to try and see you know nobody will like to lie down on a short wave diet therapy because you know that it has the biggest interference effects it can interfere with any radiation it can interfere with any tissues any implants every electronic device which is uh, in the whole clinic actually we tell that it's not just the next cubicle putting a curtain in between will not stop the short wave diathermy it will go to even the next clinic which is there behind next beside the wall so remember that that is the reason why short wave diathermy is not that openly approved by the food and drug administration in us but it does not mean that short wave diathermy is harmful same way now modulated pulsed short wave diathermy has come unfortunately you use the pulsed electromagnetic energy patient do not feel anything there is no heat nothing so patient do not feel that uh, anything that is passing and the patient keeps asking whether the machine is on or not the moment they ask such a question no sibo comes they cannot recover even if genuinely the pulse electromagnetic energy is effective lateral epicondylalgia and you want to give even the shock waves uh, uh, the probes you would have seen shock wave extra corporeal shock wave you apply for lateral epicondylalgia or you apply for the plantar heel pain very high level of evidence for their improvement but the probe eventually gives this sound sound okay if that sound is not there you see whether the shock wave is effective in the patient okay because that sound is the only one like chiropractor adjuster tak 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 okay we all do that joint cracking adjustments okay with the adjuster tool remember you cannot eliminate a placebo at the same time newer methods like uh, matrix rhythm therapy and all has come the one which can Uh, vibrate in a frequency which can help the extracellular fluid transport okay so but many of this you see the research evidence is a company which is not the one which is in india so every time our uh, as a clinician when the companies approach you that you take this equipments many of the uh, representatives from the company will be keeping on contacting you either they will contact through whatsapp itself Uh, if they get the number they'll be sending all the manual to machine everything they'll be sending 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 and the organizing uh, workshops or conferences the sponsors also they'll be ready to take they'll put up a stall they will explain that they will give us short lecture uh, they try to market their product okay but we as a clinician we should stay away from the marketing side of a commercial distribution of a product okay even if it is genuinely helping you recommend the therapy not the machine okay so you say that ultrasound is effective that's all which machine i cannot recommend machines because today the company may be producing a genuine uh, machine tomorrow they might produce a fake machine you see that ms dhoni is getting the court notice that he was promoting a real estate uh, and that real estate promoter has cheated many people and he was involved in promoting that real estate brand and he is now have to answer the court so please do not promote a product in company orientation you promote the product in terms of the therapy you tell that traction is effective you can give it which company i can give you choose your company depending upon the fee the amount which is there the company's legal status okay you verify yourself which is genuine and then you take from that company what we do in uh, of course uh, aympt for cervical traction is not just the mechanical traction device we have pneumatic traction 
you can inflate you can put this collar and then you can inflate this so it gives the traction and this can be combined in uh, sitting standing walking combined with of course neural mobilization as uh, Ritumam was also showing the demonstration that one of our junior therapists is applying during the traction that she was doing the neural mobilization. If it was spasm, when we give a traction, we are thinking of what parameter should be the traction. Radiculopathy, I want to give a traction. So what is the parameter for the traction? Think like this. If there is a spasm means, during the traction, I require reciprocal inhibition. If there was a radiculopathy, during the traction, I, I need mid-range neural mobilization. Mid-range. Because mid-range is slider effect. You can't change the machine parameters and get an improvement in the patient. You have to change the patient's role when they are taking the treatment. Then only patient will improve. You will rely on the machine if you are a layman. But you as a clinician, how can you rely on the machine? You should see that machine is required for adding the or enhancing the patient performance. If, for example, about neuromuscular electrical stimulation, I'm asking a question. All of you can put in the chat. We have commonly used for Bell's palsy, the facial nerve paralysis. We have always used this neuromuscular electrical stimulation. Whether we use it for other regions, food drop, we will try some, maybe, okay, sometimes in a quadriplegic or paraplegic with a food drop, we'll try, we would have tried to give, okay. Uh, but otherwise, if you see Bell's palsy, everybody would have used the electrical stimulation. I wanted to ask you, anybody gave the exercises to the unaffected side during the stimulation of the muscles of the face? You are giving galvanic stimulation to this, okay, affected side, paralyzed side of the face. Have you ever incorporated a contralateral facial muscles activation? This is unaffected side activation during the galvanic stimulation of the affected side. How many of you? Yes or no? In the chat. Because what I want to highlight is a simple common sense of very rarely we use one side of the face for facial expression. Okay. Only raising one eye, bro. I am not able to do. I, I lid closing one eye, every man will be able to do. Okay. That is for a different reason. Otherwise, if you see, only one side, only one side we never do. All our facial expressions are bilateral. If you want a motor recovery, and the nerves regeneration is not there, galvanic you are using for the muscle stimulation. You want only this side to be activated, telling the patient that try to close the eye, close the eye, close the eye, close the eye. Patient will be doing Bell's phenomena. Sawing, sawing, it will be going. With that, you want to give the stimulation for the orbicularis oculi. Or tell the patient, close both eyes. And then give the stimulation. Or at least close the other eye. Because patient gets that psychological thing that you tell them close both eyes. Okay. You have kept the probe and then telling the patient. Okay, patient is a old patient without hair. And he's having Bell's palsy here. Okay. So you tell the patient that close both eyes. He will tell right eye I cannot close doctor. Okay. They usually tell this. So what you have to do? Because they have memorized, they have got frustrated seeing the mirror. Right eye is not closing. Okay. So they will always remember that my right eye will not close, sir. For that treatment only, I have come to you. Okay. You only should do something. Then you tell, close the left eye. 
close the left eye close the left eye the stimulation sensation is there when the stimulation is increasing close the left eye close the left eye over a period of time you will find the change here that same side activation also will improve it has to because it is bilateral that is facial expressions facial expression as a functional activity you look at it it is bilateral right and left may not be equal but at least it's bilateral so ensure that you incorporate this and see the difference to know what is aompt and functional approach ultrasound everybody who have done the course i know dr krishna dr chaitanya dr ritu dr darshana they'll be in a different world that it is like the whole perspective of electrotherapy has been turned upside down okay we were thinking like it was uh, just the machine and we are using the treatment but you are telling that do some uh, rotator cuff activation during the ultrasound okay do some capsule uh, lengthening during the ultrasound okay posterior capsule means um various aspects so please understand that it is our responsibility to improve the electrotherapy how can we not improve the electrotherapy if we are integrating the functional aspects definitely it will improve the another pointer which i am telling you are keeping the tests in relief for the upper trapezius okay uh, trigger point is there spasm is there i have already told about reciprocal inhibition okay when you use it for spasm use motor control the deep cervical shaft flex are students as you are applying the tens for the trigger point with the spasm do not make the patient to lie down give it in sitting give it with the motor control okay if not sitting at least to supine lying still motor control incorporate together see that moment you are training the endurance the stabilizer muscle definitely the mobilizer muscle which is going into a trigger point that is the uh, what is called as kinesiopathological model where my motor control gets affected because of which other muscles are overworking and they get the fatigue then they get the strain then trigger points then spasm also there are various terminologies which is to do with the effects like reducing muscle spasm no remove that out of your mind it is not reducing muscle spasm it is optimizing muscle spasm because muscle spasm is needed body wants it that is why muscle spasm is there you are going to only optimize the muscle spasm because muscle spasm is a effect it is not the cause there is some other tissue is damaged that's why it is muscle spasm so ensure that the other tissue damage has to be treated so that muscle spasm won't be there don't keep a modality to reduce the spasm to optimize the spasm that means excessive spasm should not be there because excessive spasm itself cause pain because it is a ligament injury spasm came excessive spasm another pain comes because of the spasm so we need optimizing the spasm so that the other pain do not come and the ligament injury was protected by the spasm that spasm has to be there because ligament is not protecting so the muscle is gone into a spasm in order to protect the joint it can be a hamstring spasm in an acl injury you need not to keep a electrical modality reduce the hamstring spasm what you have to do you have to optimize the hamstring spasm your target has to be the additional pain should not come because of the spasm also remember electrical modality is not for reducing the inflammation inflammation is the body's natural process of wound healing but that natural processes creates abnormal exudates abnormal irritation on the nerve endings pre nerve endings creating pain so what you need to do is optimize the inflammation don't think reducing the inflammation 
So excessive inflammation, we want to optimize it. As a physical therapist who is attending the AOMPT, even a free webinar on electrothermotherapy, please understand these things. That functional aspects has to be incorporated, bottom line. Whether you activate the stabilizer muscles like even core stability, when the patient is taking modality for the back pain, or you have kept the electrodes for the shoulder, the sh shoulder subject doing a rotator cuff activation, motor control is a basic thing which easily everybody can incorporate. And the next one, of course, advanced techniques will be in the courses only we are teaching. If people think that you are practice, you are definitely using electrotherapy. But you want to use the electrotherapy, which will identify you as a clinician. When you discuss about that electrotherapy to the physician, the physician will tell, wow, this is physiotherapist. If you want to listen from your surgeon, take the course of the AYMPT. I'm giving it with an open challenge. Understand that even if you are giving a tense for a pain relief, patient has a cancer pain. Cancer pain. Okay? Sleep disturbances. You want to keep the tense. Always ask the patient, is this stimulus what you are feeling? Is it comfortable? Because patient-controlled analgesia is important. Don't think that this much frequency has to be kept. And you keep it on the patient, the patient will tell, ah, I'm getting burning pain. Many times you would have felt that. There are parameters, but that parameter when you use, the patient will have worsening. So that is why sensory stimulus itself, we ask the patient, comfortable sensation, higher level of comfort, whether discomfort is five out of 10, do not keep the, any kind of sensory stimulation beyond the 5 out of 10 discomfort of the patient. Unless the patient is an athlete who tells that, I want more, I want more. Otherwise, everybody maintain only 5 out of 10 discomfort. What is the discomfort? It may be like a sensation like this or it may be a sensation like this. Okay, Whatever the patient gets, Talk to the patient and ask. Patient-controlled analgesia is important. You can also tell. It's a patient-controlled electroanalgesia. Thermoanalgesia. Use these terms. There's nothing. That is the concept in physicians also. They give you a medication. What do they tell? Tell me tomorrow whether you are fine. Whether pain has reduced. So everybody wants to know the feedback from the patient. When you are applying, there is nothing wrong in asking the patient that whether it is comfortable or not. Discomfort means how much it is comfort. Sensory stimulus. Also experiment whether neurodynamic positions, upper limb or lower limb, whether it will have a better pain relief when you are using the transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. Because you are using a nerve stimulation. What better can stimulate the nerve than the neurodynamic positions? Don't give the tense the simple prone lying, side lying and all. If you are keeping the electrodes for pyriformis, patient is having a referred pain or numbness in the thigh or in the foot, pyriformis syndrome. You are thinking IFT, I'll keep in the full region or I will keep tense only for the pyriformis. But whatever you do in the side lying, keep the mid-range SLR position. I am just giving you tips, which is not even one percentage of what exactly you will learn from the courses of the academy. I assure you that 99 percentage, what clinically, how you can apply and adapt, absolutely it will be only in the courses. Because... Don't think that patient recovers for free. It is your investment, your hard work, your investment in the potential that I have to become better. 
that makes the patient better. Understand that there is scope for improvisation in every modality. Integrating multidimensional principles. All our questions, your questions revolve around what is called as the parameters. What parameters we can use? There is a patient with the symptoms. Which modality we can use? Okay. Point here is every modality can be used. In what way you'll decide which modality is depending upon the evaluation what you do in the patient. For pain alone, don't use the modalities. Because for pain, all the modalities have pain relief. So then I am giving this for a pain relief. Don't tell that. Because that is even IRR will give the pain relief. Laser also has pain relief. Microwave has pain relief. Cold back also pain relief is there. So then which one to give? Think that each one has a one side the patient or the surgeon because that is a placebo. Other side, you are understanding of what is that effect that it has other than improving the blood circulation and relieving the pain. What is the effect that it has on the tissue? If short wave diathermy has to be used, there has to be ionic imbalance because we are using a different method which will influence the ions. Yes. Madam was telling about polarized, non-polarized, ionized. Okay, so we have different types of objects. Uh, she was telling about structures which are having tendency to get ionized. Structures which will get polarized, but they will not get ionized. Other structures which will never get polarized. So for those pathologies which affect those structures which are not getting polarized, what is the use of giving short wave? So every modality has that, but we cannot decide with that effect alone because placebo is important boss. Beyond placebo, there is nothing. So we have to choose according to that only. In exercises, there is no placebo. But in electrotherapy, because the machine is involved and also because the surgeon is telling that, give that therapy, definitely there will be a strong placebo. Utilize the placebo for the relief. Do not fight with the placebo. That is one message which you have to take. And the next thing is when you are discussing with the surgeon, remember that your therapy has to be functionally targeted. And then when you discuss, a genuine surgeon will appreciate you. But a surgeon who wants to operate the patient, they don't want the patient to become normal without surgery. There are many surgeons like that because if they replace the knee joint, the prosthetic company gives them the commission. The knee joint prosthesis. It's one and a half lakhs. The prosthesis in the knee joint is. So they get a commission from the company or they perform 50 surgeries in the year. They get an overseas trip free. So they go for vacation one month to Switzerland and come back. Enjoy the snow. So that is physician, their choice. So they will try to operate. Corporate hospitals also tells five surgeries you have to do every month. Otherwise, your salary will be reduced. They have kept the target like this for orthopedic surgeon. They have to perform five surgeries. Physiotherapist also targets are like this. So they try to use the electrotherapy machines because the exercise you cannot give for one hour, two hour and charge the patient extra. But modality, you can keep one hour easily. And then you can charge the patient and after that, your income of the department has improved. So, lot of unethical aspects revolve around this electrotherapy financially. Same way that companies, conference sponsors, lot of conflicts of interest. What you need to see is from me, from my within, how I can be bound 
by my professional wisdom as a human being what i want what i don't want will i like to be cheated by somebody or i like to be treated or cheated so placebo is there to explain to the patient that that is also important pain education pain physiology education separately there is a domain it's very very essential before giving any pain relief modality you give that pain physiology education many of the patients will change the choice of the modality and they will also tell that you choose what is best for me they will come to that point so these things are very important in our skill set not just for chronic pain central sensitization alone pain physiology education is needed every patient has that biopsychosocial channel in which they are feeling the pain they are expressing the pain they are maintaining the pain okay everything so make sure that you address the pain physiology education it's not a back care education it's not a neck neck care education advice that is not pain education pain physiology education is separately pain stimulation and pathway as how rithmam was telling using metaphors like examples of boss secretary employees okay boss is the central nervous system secretary is the thalamus um the pun is the nerves okay and the final nerve endings are the uh, employees who are working okay so many examples you can give these are metaphoric stories this will improve the understanding of a common man that my pain is a multi dimensional phenomena it can be treated at various levels belief can change that that is why many people do religious practices they climb with that many stairs but initial 20 steps only pain will start in the legs but still they will climb 200 steps with the pain how so that is descending inhibition so various aspects are there for relief it's not a praying god will relieve the symptoms it is the thought that i pray god i will get better that thought relieves the symptom so ultimately we should what is called as somehow come to the fact that it's a mind body medicine we can't separate the mind out of the body's effects whether with mind alone we can cure the body depends upon how strong our mind is everybody cannot uh, influence the body with their mind either mind has to be very very strong and focused then you can influence we have evidence for such people and the same way functional knowledge is not for everybody people will have their own conceptions about biomechanics they think that biomechanics is important only for exercises but biomechanics is important for electrotherapy also because tissues are dependent upon biomechanics if you are treating the tissues unless targeting their kinetics or kinematics don't say that it is a treatment because tissue injury means pathomechanics altered mechanics how will you correct that mechanics kinetics that is muscle contraction kinematics the joint movements whether you want to give it separately electrotherapy first for 15 minutes then you give the kinetics and the kinematics or during electrotherapy itself you give the kinetics and the kinematics the corrective kinetics and kinematics so that is why instruction should be focused on understanding the pathomechanics of the condition a frozen shoulder you want to give ultrasound to the anterior capsule on what basis you have a patient who tells that i cannot reach behind or overhead activities external rotation you want to give a continuous ultrasound to the anterior capsule fine but the same patient who is unable to reach behind the back don't give therapeutic ultrasound to the anterior capsule because this is 
posterior capsule. This is the basic beta mechanics. What I want you to be just alerted upon. Like this, every region has its own differences. Yeah, injury of medial meniscus versus medial collateral, ligament in the knee, it's not the same. For the medial collateral, I might give a valgus stress only in the 15 degree of knee flexion. Whereas for the meniscus, I will do an external rotation of the tibia with the knee inflection, 90 degree. So I can incorporate what the meniscus structure is for. You know from the special test, meniscus, external rotation, it gets lengthened, McMurray's. So, Utilize that for the ultrasound of the meniscus. Same way, collateral ligament valgus stress test. So, valgus stress test, utilize that. ACL, you cannot give an ultrasound. But in ACL injury, people will have infrapetalar, peripetalar symptoms, suprapetalar also, quadriceps tendinitis or petalar tendinitis or fat pad syndrome, they will have various presentations. ACL injury people, non-operative. Post-operative will have definitely scar, its mobilization. Which modality is best for scar mobilization? We all will think, okay, ultrasound for scar mobilization. Everybody will raise their hands. But think that if the healing is not fully accomplished, even a low-level laser could be best for the wound healing. After which, or during which the wound is healing, why can't you give a quadriceps activation? When you are applying the low-level laser to the scar which is above the petala, right? Can't you give the quadriceps contraction? What is wrong? Okay, quadriceps contraction is producing the pain. So I cannot give quadriceps of contraction. Fine. Give gluteal contraction. Give lumbar core stability. Who is telling you not to do? These are all functional aspects. Because gluteal contraction with the quadriceps contraction is a PNF. The sequence of activation is hip extensors, then the knee extensors. You would have seen that in the lag control training. Quadriceps lag is there. What do we do? Bridging position. In the bridging position, we ask the patient to do SLR. The SLR will come. Normal high sitting and knee extension, SLR will not come full. There will be a 20 degree lag. But in the pelvic bridging, knee extension will come fully. So why can't you incorporate that hip extensor contraction while you are giving a neuromuscular stimulation or scar on the petala or ultrasound for petal femoral pain. Ensure that everything is in our hands. How much we want to go deeper and make the therapy better. Don't do a trial and error like, today I use this modality, not working, so tomorrow change the modality. Day after you combine the modality. Okay? Unless you incorporate functionally, know where the modality will take you as per our domain of knowledge. If placebo is there, as per patient's domain of recovery, whatever the patient wants will help. Patient wants laser. Absolutely right. While giving laser, ask the subject to do the exercises together functionally so that tomorrow the patient will not come to you like, put the laser, put the laser. They know that recovery is in their hand. That is the exercise that they do during the laser. So later when you give a home program of exercise, they will do that. Otherwise, physical therapist will be called as current therapist. Current doctor. Okay. That you can take it positively also. We are updated with the current knowledge.
okay current advances all that but what the patient tells is like massage doctor exercise doctor current doctor okay so please ensure that that current is a functional current okay so that the shock of recovery will come in that patient that wow okay i went to other therapist they only kept the machine but this therapist is ensuring that my muscle is working ensuring that my joint is moving during the machine so i have greater chances of becoming normal this is common sense you take medication also you take paracetamol for fever whether paracetamol will cure you if you start lying down lying down means you cannot once the temperature is down you start moving around and being active being normal that is how you become normal but there the fever or the high temperature contraindicates activity our musculoskeletal problem none of the problem contraindicates activity activity is the language of the brain if we do that we are going to become normal only unless it's a fracture dislocation a serious rupture those kind of uh, musculoskeletal uh, injuries you can expect that it is a it will worsen but there also we have options to use aquatic therapy in aquatic therapy using ultrasound indirect method or even we have this whirlpool it's not a fluido therapy but at least body we are moving inside the water whirlpool and with the whirlpool we can do even neural mobilization inside the water if it is neural symptoms neural mobilization has to be there if you don't learn neural mobilization you learn only david butler you learn only michael shekelak no problem but if you are learning neuro manual therapy from the aompt you will know how that is pathomechanically reasoning is done to ensure that each and every patient can be given different techniques of neural mobilization for the same disorder simple carpetal syndrome but for some patients we use the neck component some patients we use the thumb component some patients we use the wrist component we have carpetal syndrome neuro manual therapy based cupping iastm um taping kinesiological taping for the median nerve so whatever innovatively you cannot even imagine that what 50 years the advances can happen in knowledge we have already conducted those courses aompt is for the future one thing is to make the physical therapist as the boss of healthcare and to make india being the boss of the world in physical therapy and the third thing is to make knowledge as the boss of excellence through learning so with that vision only this academy has conducted so many courses and also the free webinars i extend open invitation to all of you to ensure that you just take this ultrasound course and see that if it is not different from the ultrasound what you used previously if it is same if you feel i will return your money back 100% fully <coughs> if you are not satisfied with the course also if you are not satisfied 90 percentage satisfaction below that 90 even if it is 89 percentage only you are satisfied also i will return your money back because that is the dedication that we should have that if my mother is not well i have to take her to hospital i have to get her well make her normal that is the thing which we should have with physiotherapy if you feel electrotherapy is not up to the level it is our responsibility to make the electrotherapy better we can't just ditch the electrotherapy and 
learn osteopathy and chiropractic. The same example which I demonstrated in the last session also, that if our thumb is not working, you can't take somebody else's thumb and fix it in your hand. You have to make your thumb to work. That is your responsibility. You can't amputate the thumb because it is not working. And you will find that dentists are using the ultrasound and tents for the orofacial pain, temporomandibular disorders. Speech therapists are using the neuromuscular electrical stimulation for tongue, ear, oromotor rehabilitation and all. The respiratory therapists, they will use for intercostal muscles and diaphragms, skeletons and all. But we are not using this. Modalities which have vascular effects, why can't we use in a region where it is not contraindicated? If, for example, uh, peripheral vascular disease is contraindicated for thermal modalities, why is then varicose ulcer? Varicose ulcer is treatable with UVR and IRR. So think that somewhere there is a mismatch in the knowledge in the past. Whether we should live with that mismatch or we have to ensure a better scope of practice. So that comes with a, a willpower, with a, a passion that I should improve my field. Then you will do that. Of course, with the surgeon, with the physician, everybody patient in close uh, consent and you might use it even for cancer pain and the patient becomes better. We saw that tense is contraindicated for malignancy in our textbooks even now. But now you see WHO recommends tense for cancer pain. The WHO analgesic ladder, they have the tense for cancer pain. What made that to come? Because there was a single therapist who used the tense on the cancer pain. And that single therapist published that case study. Seeing that case study, another therapist was motivated. I will do the study on rats. So he caused the cancer in the rats, experimental cancer. Then he applied the tense also. And he saw that rats are recovering. And then he told that if rats are recovering, why not human beings? Then randomized clinical trials came, tense for cancer pain. After that, systematic reviews of randomized control trials came. Now, it's a global fact. Every oncological society, the guidelines, they tell that tense has to be there for cancer pain. Physical activity prescription is important for cancer pain. Because you can prevent the cancer pain, you can treat the cancer with the physical activity alone, every type of cancer, whether it is breast cancer, oral cancer, or it is a prostate cancer. Every cancer is curable, preventable, treatable by physical activity. This is again a Cochrane systematic review. So evolution has come that extent, but we are Physical activity prescription means we'll think, okay, 25 minutes you walk, three days you walk in a week, enough. That even patients who own uh, friends will tell, our relatives will tell, why you have a physical therapy degree for it? See that which physical activity must be important for this patient. How we can make that physical activity prescription to be functionally reflecting on the patient's necessity. How to individualize each and every patient and then prescribe the exercises depending upon their cardiopulmonary status. Depending upon their autonomic nervous system status because everybody will not take the exercise positively. What type of exercise prescription has to be done? Which has to be predominant, aerobic or anaerobic? Why then there is a separate field in cardiopulmonary sciences? 
unfortunately we ignored that aspect and now new profession has come msc exercise science and medicine exercise and sport sciences separate field has come same like how occupational therapy came because we ignored the ergonomics and the pediatric aspect so occupational therapy came cognitive rehab ergonomics and pediatrics all three that is occupational therapy oral sensory oral motor speech language pathology okay and then you see for uh, cardio respiratory also pulmonary aspect we ignored so respiratory therapy profession came whatever we ignore our own physiotherapy little bit part only is becoming a single profession so imagine what all we have as a physical therapist and what is our responsible passion should be that to improvise each and every aspect of this not like if it is not useful means ignore learn physical therapy to be the best physical therapist and develop that responsibility that i as a physical therapist will improve all my physical therapy techniques by my side i will improve those techniques i do not need a non physical therapy technique to be a best physical therapist so think about this and see that how much justice you can do not only for electrotherma therapy but also for every treatment what we use and multimodal aspects which i have highlighted in the overview and the introduction ensure that it will benefit your clear clients patient controlled analgesia don't think about the numbers placebo is more important patient controlled analgesia is important as the dosage you keep it at that location and the patient gets worsening means you have to remove the electrode here you cannot tell that it is a intelligence machine okay i have to put no that intelligence is nothing in beta in the front of what your conscience will tell you that patient is worsening you can't keep that so please ensure that you use your presence of mind and judiciously combine for example a patient is doing uh, aerobic exercises versus anaerobic exercises okay you want to give a thermal modality for them anaerobic exercises heat may be beneficial if you want to give heat it should be on the muscle which is not lengthening even after the warm up so the warm up the subject is efficient not come then you the heat is flexible so to augment the warm up you keep the superficial heat for an aerobic exercise a person is doing you don't need a thermal modality at all before or after because it is for cardiovascular endurance and adaptation will take minimum 3 weeks you are not getting magic within a day same way you think about a patient who is sedentary versus patient who is physically active what way they are physically active patient plays evening tennis badminton it's anaerobic patient goes for a swim patient goes for a jog aerobic so aerobically conditioned body what you require you don't require a thermal modality for that patient what you require is only for the anaerobically conditioned whether you want a cold or a heat that is why some patients we use the cold pack but they don't have the recovery they will tell that my it's the same you will be wondering everybody with acute ankle sprain i have given cold pack this fellow i am keeping it is not at all having any effect because the nerve endings are adapted that they don't need a thermal stimulus they will get the stimulus only from the working muscles because the person is active physically so ensure that individualizing the therapy is a bigger uh, domain 
for which your knowledge has to be upgraded in every dimension. You can't just learn about electrotherapy and then apply the electrotherapy. You have to learn about the patient. And that is where the courses have to target how understanding the pathomechanics of the disease condition is important more than understanding the parameters. The dosage parameters, everybody is mathematics and physics when it comes to electrothermotherapy. There is no big achievement in knowing that. Memorizing the wavelength and the frequencies. These are all only for the undergraduate viva, the practicals. But beyond that, if you see reality, you will use the same frequency. Patient is not comfortable. You have to change it. Even ultrasound also, 1 megahertz or 3 megahertz. If you want to continue giving the ultrasound, patient is telling, no, I am not feeling comfortable. Okay? You are changing it to pulsed and the patient is telling that, I am not feeling anything. You keep the continuous, then the patient tells that too much of heat or my pain is coming back. When the patient tells me, what will you do? You have to ensure that what functionally I can add on, which muscles I can contract, whether joint I want to give distraction or compression, which way I will make sure that the ultrasound modality can be applied on the patient. Because I want that in the subacute stage of that healing, the capsule or the ligament fibers, collagen reorganization can be brought to only by the piezoelectric effect of the ultrasonic waves. So I want that effect. A surgeon has told ultrasound. But still when I am giving this patient is telling worsening. It means that I have to modify the patient situation, condition and give the ultrasound. Same. It will not worsen. That is why we had the course on Saturday. And of course, even new members like Dr. Sri Divya who have taken uh, anatomy clinical fellowship, clinical anatomy fellowship, she took the videos. And also she took, I think, ultrasound. So when they spend time and they watch these videos and they, uh, what is called as invest the passion by changing it on the patient immediately, don't give the old type of ultrasound. Change it and see on day one. Automatically, the universe will provide you that. You are the initiative of the change. So automatically, recovery will happen. And uh, you will never go wrong. Because you are sincere to the knowledge that you learned. You are also sincere that you should do something better for the patient. Automatically, when these two are balanced, excellence is an automatic effect. Without learning, you want to do better for the patient, nothing will happen. Okay. Learn, but from where? That is the next question. Okay. So, and what depth you are utilizing everything. So, summarizing words, if uh, including any questions specifically, if there, I will ask Dr. Sri Divya first because she's our new member. She's first time coming on the screen. Yes, ma'am. Tell me if you have any questions. If not a question, then you can also tell about your feedback on the ultrasound, like functional ultrasound, what you actually experienced okay, by taking that course. Yes, Divya, ma'am. Hi, sir. Uh, this is the first time I'm attending all uh, to AOMPT, as my friend Chaitanya has suggested. And this is very useful, and I'm improving at my knowledge. All the videos are very useful, sir, to improve the knowledge. Thanks, okay. that, sir. And the electrothermotherapy, what are all questions you are having? What are the questions which you posted in the chat? Uh, no, sir, I have not yet posted any questions. Okay. So you are clear with electrotherapy as an expert. So you can take the next webinar. Hmm. <laughs> yes? yes? No questions, na? What are you doing, ma'am? 
Yes, sir. Skiti, we do not have any questions. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Sir, sir is saying that ma'am will take another webinar on electrotherapy. So it will, with the functional uh, electrotherapy included that ultrasound and the other session which you are going to take in the next month uh, on the electronic modality in a functional way. So we will learn it uh, more. Actually, the I was previously, I was also stuck with the so many question, but uh, as the session started, you started explaining. And when I was making some PPT that time, uh, that uh, my mind has opened that why we were uh, using these electronic therapy in a wrong way. But as you explained in starting or in the last session that how, when, where the modalities are the same, but how our planning according to the patient is very important here. The symptoms of the patient not uh, following that particular dosage of that uh, machine is the right way to use. We have to see the symptoms and that what are the patient feeling according to that. If the, the, any modality which is giving an unpleasant uh, uh, signals to the body of your patient, so you have to stop that, not the following the way that say only that uh, it is the part of this modality and going through that. So these are the things, yes, uh, we were, uh, I think, stuck in these things. So after uh, learning from AMPT, uh, our so many doubts has cleared. And before the session itself, uh, uh, I had so many questions. But as you started in the uh, first part of that session, that, that uh, traffic jam of that uh, questions has cleared. So thank you so much, sir. Uh, I think it's uh, for me also a very different experience for today's session because what I have learned from today's session and uh, I noticed what was my mistake. I have noticed and pointed out that mistakes also so that I can also come out from that mistake. And in future, I will not repeat whenever I will treat my patient and whenever I will apply uh, the electronic modality. So definitely I will come up with that mistakes also. So thank you so much, sir, because in AMPT, I think uh, you always uh, show uh, a very different view of every topic. We simply think that electronic modality, but the way you start explaining it becomes extraordinary because that time uh, our mind opened and we understand that what, what was our mistake and what we have to do in future also. So thank you so much, sir. Uh, Really, it was appreciable uh, session from your side that you have clear our traffic jam. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Over to you, sir. Yeah, I cleared the traffic jam by removing the traffic police. Okay. <laughs> because the traffic police will be telling that what parameters, okay? Uh, different companies are there, which one to buy. Exactly. Different modalities are there, which one to use. Yeah. Okay. That is traffic police will tell. And he creates the traffic jam. Yeah. So, what we have here is about the Krishna Kumar's question on the chat, which is interesting to highlight. Muzamil's question I have answered. Um, male suffering, 30 year old male suffering from sacroiliac giant pain for past one year. Ultrasound is relieving the symptoms temporarily. Pain is radiating down the lateral thigh, lateral gastroenteritis. What can be used as an adjunct to better results? Do we have to treat the radiating areas? First uh, clarity here, what we need is, ultrasound is relieving the symptoms temporarily. How that ultrasound was given? Okay. Was the sacroiliac ultrasound given with the palm closure, post closure? Or... It's a sacral dysfunction versus an innominate dysfunction. Sacral dysfunction influenced with the forward bending, lateral flexion. In the sitting position, you gave on the ultrasound at the sacroiliac uh, interface. Or iliac dysfunction. So I made the patient to move the leg, flex the hip, abduct, adduct in the sideline, and then I gave the ultrasound. So sacroiliac means I can influence the sacrum through the trunk movements. I can influence the iliac through the leg movements and ensure that the ligament specifically is loaded and then I give the ultrasound. That is functional ultrasound of AYMPT. 
patient just lies down prone and then we remove the and we give the ultrasound on the buttock is not the sacroiliac ultrasound okay if it is coccydynia giving ultrasound on the coccyx anybody can give but with the pelvic floor contraction with even lower limb positioning because muscles of the lower limb are attached to the coccyx through the facial connections right from piriformis so how we influence through the leg positions internal external rotation of the leg and then during the administration of the ultrasound to the coccyx that is functional ultrasound of aompt more than that if you see radiating down the lateral thigh to the gastrocnemius every clinician should first differentiate every pain that is traveling is not radiating pain a traveling pain can be a referred pain how do you differentiate a radiating pain from a referred pain body language first factor patient will tell pain is coming like this okay lateral side patient pain is coming like this this is referred pain if they tell only like this the pain is coming then only it is radiating pain it's a basic body language identifier referred pain can be from shoulder joint it can refer the pain like this it can be muscles of the shoulder which can refer the pain like this ligaments of the shoulder which can refer the pain like this and the nerve that is going also can refer the pain like this nerve referred pain so that is why every concept or approach of the avmpt we try that articular myofascial neural differentiations a neurodynamic test will reproduce the referred pain a muscle contraction testing will reproduce the referred pain a joint compression distraction or joint glides will reproduce the referred pain so i know whether it is articular referred myofascial referred or neural referred then position of the arm elevated is causing that pain it is arterial referred pain dependent position is causing that referred pain that is a venous referred pain so do not think that radiating pain moment the pain is traveling means don't think it is radiating pain that is the worst misconception that anybody can have radiating pain is to be told as a terminology only i if nerve root compression is there then only it is radiating pain if you are not able to identify a nerve root compression never use the term radiating pain even if the pain travels along the line you can tell it is radiating pain but if you assess the radiculopathy and it is not present you tell it as radicular pain syndrome because it is not radiculopathy otherwise if it is neural referred or radiating along the course of the peripheral nerve don't tell as radiating pain you tell it as uh, neuralgia median neuralgia along the median nerve the pain is there median neuralgia so understand that as you are exploring neural symptoms neuromanual therapy various courses of aompt we have courses for almost everything in the world so you will get a better perspective along these lines what i described now is nothing actually the courses are lifelong it will help you empower you 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 will be able to teach others so that is the value of the knowledge that we provide and also see that uh if for example i should know the cause of the radiating pain so if i know that it is joint whatever modality i am using i should give the joint to be getting compressed or distracted then only i am influencing the joint and i should use the modality for the joint if it is myofascial referred pain i should target the modality on the muscle because target tissue has to be treated not the referred pain area neural also if you see neural loading off loading whether it is neurodynamics because now testing was positive it was producing the referred pain 
so i should mechanically influence the nerve and to stimulate the nerve i can use either lower frequency or medium frequency which is tens lower frequency which is faraday and also you see for higher frequency i want to stimulate the nerve then what is the option is there in higher frequency okay low level laser therapy little bit you can use for the nerves for uh, even diabetic neuropathy nerve regeneration nerve healing okay so they have found with the nerve biopsy studies that low level laser therapy helps i am not a proponent of high power laser okay because i have uh, i will what is called as i have to see the effects okay i have to understand that either through closed sources that they have used and it is very effective and the commercial side is still i am not getting satisfied okay so i don't not want to analyze the class 4 laser the high power so the same way when you go to what is called as the peripheral uh, findings of sensory loss motor loss think the patient as a holistic picture the bigger picture you are suspecting nerve means radiating pain means radiculopathy means neurological examination is needed without a sensory deficit and motor deficit it is not a radiculopathy it is only radicular pain syndrome so these are all the, the universal this is global validated diagnostic criteria of cervical radiculopathy what we taught in the cervical spine specialist course so ensure that aympt knowledge if somebody is questioning you and telling that this knowledge is wrong it cannot happen even in your dream anywhere in the world understood so that is the validity of the information what we provide so try to see that you don't forget you don't get deviated treating the radiating pain areas will be important only if there is a huge peripheralization of symptoms that means subject is not having centralization effect at all you are checking uh, spinal positions all these things i am not talking mckenzie concept here but same way only peripheralization is there peripheral symptoms are maximum in that patient you can use the symptoms at the radiating areas dermatomally you want to apply because that is the counter irritation mechanism as i was highlighting that you can use at receptor level is counter irritation at the nerve level it is the a uh, high di large diameter fibers that mechanical stimulation and then you see for at the descending inhibition it's the placebo aerobic exercises and what we have as a remote desensitization that is for autonomic nervous system so lot of things pain relief mechanisms even uh, right side severe symptoms are there i am not able to apply electrotherapy use it on the left side man same region keep the electrotherapy on the other side definitely you will get relief because there are cross fiber connections both sides are controlled by the both the sides of the brain for 10 percentage and you all know that we don't use even 1 percentage of our brain 10 percentage is more than enough for recovery so ensure that by manual training both sides why functional electrical stimulation which we are using in uh, for uh, hand training okay or the foot drop in a hemiplegia we are using functional electrical stimulation that means we are picking up the electrical signals from the proximal muscles and it gives amplifies and then it gives the stimulation to the paralyzed dorsiflexors so whenever my hip flexor is contracting immediately dorsiflexors get the stimulus so what happens hip flexion knee flexion dorsiflexion is together so hip flexors are activated and impulse goes foot to dorsiflexion happens so when i have to clear the foot i activate the hip flexors dorsiflexion happens 
and the subject is able to clear the food when he is walking. FES is given with the equipment fixed on the leg. The subject can walk. Sometimes it is part of the socks, part of the shoe. So a lot of uh, modifications and devices have come. Same thing appears to phantom limb pain. People have pain in the region where there is no path at all. It is amputated. But there is still the, my right thumb is paining. Thumb itself not there, but it is paining. So what they do? They keep the, the tense on the normal side. Not the amputated side. And the subject has relief of the phantom pain. Same like how a mirror therapy can relieve symptoms. When it is central, use the other side, contralateral. When it's locally that it is hypersensitive, you cannot apply anything. You cannot give ultrasound on the stump neuroma. You cannot keep the tense at the stump. Okay. You can experiment and see. But if the subject is not tolerating, better go to the other side. It is like diverting the concentration from the painful area to the normal side where the stimulus is coming. Yes, of course, that is the remote desensitization. Okay. That can be useful in a reflex sympathetic dystrophy. But in AYMPT, it's not like that. It will be thoracic spine treatment position when we are applying for reflex sympathetic dystrophy. Because thoracic techniques are there for sympathetic nervous system. In that portion, only tense will be applied for an RSD. Even if it is a contralateral hand, eh? still, because functionally, how the nervous system works. That is patient perspective. That is the, um, I can say it is the cream of the AYMPT courses. Understood? So, if you have not understood means, don't worry. Only free webinars will never make you to understand. What type of tense can be used in a OA patient? If the patient pain is radiating, which type of IFT karam can we use? If the pain is more, can we use twice a day treatment? For example, this is a question which is the modality one side, other side the disorder. Okay, O A N E, or it is uh, another condition. Okay, third only is a patient centered. Okay, otherwise, if you say IFT, radiating pain, which type of IFT can we use? So, the same patient with the radiating pain has a sensory deficit. You cannot use any electrical stimulus. Same patient, the radiating pain has a motor deficit. You have to use with the muscle stimulation. So it says radiating pain only, but what modality you use? That is the neurological examination which will tell. OA knee and tense. Okay. You want to use for pain in the OA knee. Where is the pain? Whether the joint line pain, then why tense is needed? Whether constant pain. Sleep disturbances are there in the OA knee. Impossible. It must be septic arthritis. Then only pain will be like that. So then why tense is needed there? If you want to give the ultrasound to the medial joint line. Because you want to help the healing of the medial joint capsule, which has got degenerated with the osteophytes. Think rationally. What is the problem in the OA knee? The ONE patient is having a petal of femoral pain. A wax bath will be better than the ultrasound or it can be tense. Better than the tense and the ultrasound, wax bath will be better. Because ONE thermal modalities, they feel better. Early morning stiffness eases with the movements. So that means heat will relieve the symptom. That is why the warming up happens with daily activity, so they feel better. So they will also feel better with hot water fermentation and all that. So 
your side petal of femoral it is a three dimensional area so wax bath will mold to the part if you are giving ultrasound then water bag method so that it will mold to the part then you give give the probe various explorations can be happening what it requires is a dedication and a common sense not the instruction manual a clinician with the dedication and common sense because the evaluation of patient is important one every patient will not have same symptom that is what we have been highlighting in the one webinar itself so you cannot give a modality for one you have to give the modality for what is the dysfunction in that patient with the one if the patient has iliotibial band uh, trigger points and you want to keep you want to give treatment you want to engage the neuromuscular control you might even give quadriceps stimulation vastus medial stimulation paradig for a petal of femoral pain syndrome because iliotibial band is overactive instead of giving ultrasound to the iliotibial band giving faradic stimulation to the vastus medialis will help so these all things comes with the evaluation weakness of vastus medialis adhesion of the iliotibial band adhesion requires release for the release when you are doing manually the restriction is not getting released use the hot pack the hot pack will slightly separate the fascia and the muscle because blood circulation superficially will improve then the release will happen easily you would have noticed that if you are doing a facial release restriction is there you keep the hot pack release will happen easily so that is why evaluation is important don't go by the condition i am keeping on repeating tirelessly all the webinars don't ask what is the treatment of the condition your physical examination will guide you what is the treatment without examining don't tell a diagnosis you are not treating the diagnosis you are treating the patient two patients with the same diagnosis will have 200 differences at least finding the two differences will make you a clinician if you think both the patients are same you are lifelong technician dosage once once a day versus twice a day when will i apply or when will i tell that we have to apply only when patient wants it twice a day otherwise there is nothing that is makes you twice a day you give alternate days no problem there are some patient maximum take i believe that, that that will help me give him twice a day i'll coming and give tell them one one and you want it i am giving take it no problem that is anyway income for you double so treat but at the same time a genuine patient should not be getting rejected in the treatment because this patient is taking the treatment that bed is not available that treatment is not available another patient genuinely indicated for the treatment and you are not able to give the ultrasound because this therapist this patient is getting a second dose depending on their own choice that should not happen that only you as a clinician can draw the line you are the boss of your clinic on to whom you give the appointment extra appointments on whom you should not give a disappointment it's very simple to think about this any exercise will it be requiring i always tell exercises is not once or twice a day you do exercises 1 2 minutes every hour throughout the day so there's no question of once or twice a day make sure that exercise is part of their life whether it is a radiculopathy with a neural gliding exercise whether it is a muscle myofascial trigger point which is with flexibility and neuromuscular control motor control 
or it is the joint which is the self mobilization with movement or the what is called as uh, intermittent uh, compression distraction of the joints like walking for example for the knee is an intermittent compression distraction of the knee physical activity so how it helps the synovial fluid adjuncts electrotherapy is also adjuncts there are many adjuncts to the electrotherapy like manual therapy exercises additional interventions which is even nowadays they apply the electrotherapy with the cupping electro cupping oh electro needling is there they do the needling and then they give the stimulation okay you see that electrical stimulation or it is ultrasound all this can be combined iastm can be combined with the electrotherapy or thermal so various things can be incorporated and do not believe that what i tell will be correct because what i tell is only the knowledge domain the reality domain you are the boss you examine everything you find the findings then those findings are there you give this then it will be making the patient better because in aoimpt we don't teach only the techniques we teach what the patient will expect also the psychological aspects of the patients that also we teach we teach how to tackle a surgeon that also we teach reality we are teaching so that options if a surgeon is cooperative that strategy not needed even then you can use that strategy to enhance the understanding there's nothing wrong on a sunday afternoon that you want a time off or you have an extra day off from your clinic ensure that the surgeon if they are operating a patient go and watch the surgery with the surgeon you are not going to do surgery next day but at least i want to know the surgical anatomy i want to see how surgical correction is done so that it will make me to understand the pathomechanics better i want to learn from you the basic bottom line where any surgeon will salute your passion that you want to become better and learn every therapist who has the best cooperation from orthopedic surgeon will tell that they have watched the orthopedic surgeon <coughs> these are things which is normal and natural which you have to do not for buttering not for preventing a problem you are doing this no it just come from within these were the tradition of how the senior therapist over the years have been learning whose hands will make the magic on the patients without any knowledge they did not attend any workshop but whatever they do the patient is improving why because the sincerity there's nothing wrong in respecting a modern uh, medicine physician we are part of modern medicine we are not part of alternative medicine to become chiropractor and osteopaths they are alternative medicine to think that and then be judiciously applying the techniques and learn from genuine people who can teach you these techniques better and your responsibility is to improvise the evidence so applying it case uh, scenario case webinar case reports so that future somebody will do the study and it will be better for the people right so what's important here is to see that we have crossed to 7 pm and of course it's a monday saturday there was ah yeah yeah what is am i visible and audible yes sir yes sir yes sir yeah. Yeah.
your screen was freezed, no? Now screen was frozen. frozen. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Now fine. Okay. Yes. So we close the session. Yes, um, sir. Thank you so but, much, Mr. Ma'am. Oh because there was a strong correlation between the battery being low and putting off and presence of another person in the house. Okay. So we have to correlate the examination findings. Okay. You can't diagnose by one finding. Okay. So then you should see that treatment will be patient centered. Okay. Mm. Right. So, what is it, ma'am? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you mm. so much. Thank you, Darshna, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for your presentation today. Wonderful. Thank and you. thank you, sir, for explanation. I think, um, I think nobody ever would explain so much in a free webinar what sir has explained today. It's amazing. My perspective about uh, electrotherapy has definitely changed. Uh, from today's session and from the functional uh, ultrasound therapy, what uh, we learned, you know, on Saturday. I mean, I was always a stringent person, like, <laughs> oh, and I don't like electrotherapy, but uh, it's like more of manual therapy because uh, I always had this perspective that um, a patient can recover only when biomechanically things are corrected, the dysfunctions are corrected. But uh, these two sessions have really opened my eyes that. No, we can use electrotherapy uh, very judiciously and functionally, which was more interesting. And now I think now henceforth, uh, happily I'll be using electrotherapy. I was using electrotherapy for, as sir was mentioning, you have to use it. Even if it's a placebo effect for the patient, you have to use it. Uh, sometimes respect the surgeon who's giving you uh, the reference and mentioning that it has to be given ultrasound, IFP, whatever. But... Uh, Functional use of electrotherapy is definitely, I think, what is going to be uh, my way of treating patients from these last two sessions, what I've learned. I also want to get your focus to the question in the chat asked by Abdul Razak. Mm -hmm. The second question of spinal cord injury and T4 complete uh, paraplegia, where he had highlighted about which electrotherapy thermal modality can be used for the patient. Okay. Are you able to see that? So one minute. Hmm. No. Management of a 54-year-old patient, SCI yes. complete transaction T4 is best for the body areas below the site of uh, injury. Knowing fully well that this patient is at risk of pressure source. So it's so yeah. clear if the patient is at risk of pressure source and if the sensations are affected, then, then why do you use electrothermal modality? Like, absolutely. Okay. There are so many other things what you can do. <clears throat> See, other than the, why you have to use an electrotherapy modality. Okay. So this is what which actually creates that. If, for example, he wants to stimulate uh, the foot drop, we want to give the muscles, for example, then he should tell that for dorsiflexors re-education, which modality I can use. Pressure source, it is different area of sensory distribution and bony prominences. Okay. Mm -hmm. Motor nerve, deep peroneal for foot drop. Okay. So, there should be a specific focus as we were, we were highlighting in the full webinar in our interactions also. Uh, I just want to get a, a general idea about the whole, uh, whole thing about that um, ECS, the shock with the shock corporate shock. But the second question that has this case study, I would um, I'd like to get an answer to that. Like a 54-year-old spinal cord injury, complete transaction at C4. So what electro thermotherapy modality is best for the body areas below the site of injury? 
So that this is patient, why we are asking. That is what the same thing which we are asking. What makes you to think that you have to give electrotherapy? Okay. First thing. Pain. Pain and. Uh... If it is pain, there are treatments to treat the pain by treating the brain. There are methods like transcranial magnetic stimulation, transcranial direct current stimulation for stroke neuropathic pain. Same way, spinal cord injury related neuropathic pain also. We have um, what is called as spinal cord stimulation with the magnetic or the electric fields. Okay. I will not advise any kind of a sensory stimulus below the T4 because the lesion has a T4 having risk of autonomic dysreflexia. Autonomic dysreflexia is an emergency, medical emergency and a complication. Whoever has asked this question to you, they have asked you with a clear-cut dead end. They want to trap you. So they have asked this question. Because you should remember that T4 level injuries are prone for autonomic dysreflexia, which will cause death. So you want to give any sensory stimulus to the patient below T4 will create disproportionate increase in the hyper uh, the blood pressures, cardiac output, even visceral constipation also will create autonomic dysreflexia in these patients. So there is no necessity for electrical or thermal modality in any reason. To treat the pain, you can treat it by treating the spinal cord or you treat the brain also, because brain is the area where we feel the pain. If for example, there is fight between mother-in-law and your wife, wife is crying. That is the region which is getting painful, wife is crying. Treating the wife with buying gift is not a solution. Mother-in-law is the cause. So treat the mother-in-law. Understood? The cause of the pain, cause of the cry is more important. If your wife is crying because you are ignoring her, giving gift will not solve the issue. Understood? Your concentration, your focus only will solve the issue. So what is the cause of the pain? The below the level, what is the pain? It is a neuropathic pain. It's a central pain. So in that situation, complete paraplegia, it is complete transaction of the cord. It's not a peripheral nerve related pain. Either it's to be autonomic related pain because ganglia are intact. Sympathetic and parasympathetic. So that is why the risk of autonomic dysreflexia is there. And then you see central nervous system pain. So only these two reasons. Why you want to give electrothermal modality for these two? These two both will worsen because of electrothermal modality. As we saw, remote desensitization. That means here autonomic nervous system disturbance means use the other hand. So if it is below T4 also, apply the stimulus below above T4. If you still want to use it because you don't believe in other physical therapy methods, you are cornered that you have to use only electrotherapy modality, thermal modality means. I don't think so. Patient has to be first trained. Functional recovery is enhanced. Pain perception has to be changed. Cortical level. That is why pain physiology education we talked. Whatever we spoke, it cannot be, the question cannot be beyond what we spoke. Your question, I took it basic, specifically because it's a contraindication situation and you are talking it as a question. What Dr. Dashana told was a peripheral sensory motor disturbance. Sensory disturbance are why you to give electrical or thermal. Autonomic disturbances, autonomic dysreflexia, all this. So remember, 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 pain is central, autonomic, then only peripheral. So understand the pain science better. Then managing pain can be in multiple levels beyond treating the area with the pain. Don't treat the area with the pain. That is not treatment of the pain. 
treat the cause of the pain. That is treatment for the pain. Understood? And I think accent and English problems, maybe whatever we spoke until now, he would not have understood. Okay? It happens. So that is the reason why even after explaining him also, again he's asked the same question. Okay? I told that uh, autonomic dysreflexia is there. You should not give electrotherapy. Still he is asking that. I want to bring your attention to my second question. Spinal cord injury. Huh? Below T4. What modality you can give? Same question he is asking. Poor guy. If a Nigerian physio is talking, I know that the Nigerian physio is a very good, super excellent physio. He is taking a free webinar and I am attending. I am not able to understand the English. So what I will do? All that option that is left is like our Indian students do. Even when they are not listening, they keep nodding their head. Okay? Nothing else can be done. Hmm? So, if a sentence is spoken, only a few words we might understand. These are cultural differences. Because Darshana and Ritmam are listening to me always. When I speak, they will listen. They will understand. Even when I don't speak also, when they are treating patients, my voice will come. Okay? In their mind. So that much they have listened to the AYMPT and they have done all the courses. Okay? Through the years. So when, uh, for example, a similar case question when Ritmam was asking, I told the thing only. Okay? Answer in the WhatsApp itself. Okay? You should know what I will tell. When the surgeon do not want and the patient wants means, what is your next step? Immediately to bridge the gap in the communication. Sort it out. Otherwise, there is no point in next in treating or touching the patient. Okay. We should do that. Whether anything happens out of it or not. But this is the protocol. It is a reality-based protocol. So, surgeon tells the surgery is needed. Physiotherapy, patient tells I don't want surgery. What treatment we can give to the patient? First treatment is bridge the communication gap. Because that ambiguity itself will create a new nocebo. If the gap is bridged, placebo also will come. Orthopedician, physiotherapist, all are telling one same thing. They are appreciating each other. They are discussing with each other for my welfare. Where is the better environment where I can get a treatment? Everywhere else, the physiotherapist is shouting about orthopedic surgeon. Orthopedic surgeon is shouting about the physiotherapist. So immediately, this place, the placebo will work. So everything matters. Sometimes when the pain goes to an extent where like spinal cord injury and it's not at all manageable, we use all the physical methods, then psychological methods are needed. Self-hypnosis, a lot of other methods where a psychiatrist or psychologist will be better to tell about that. And then you see for psychological methods not working, then maybe spiritual or social methods. Healing. Not, there is nothing wrong in going beyond what is the physical methods. You are a physical therapist, you should know your limitations. If there is a contraindication, means I cannot use. If the, it's not working, means my domain ends. A neurosurgeon will think about using blocks, using uh, stimulation, spinal cord stimulation, using percutaneous devices, like a pacemaker. They will fix it in the body. It will be giving stimulation to the spinal cord. Many things are possible. A neurosurgeon will do that. Or anesthesiologist will do that. They are called as interventional pain physicians. They do these surgeries. They do uh, the dorsal ganglia and block. Even there is autonomic dysreflexia risk is there. They block the dorsal root ganglia. Rhizotomy. Nerve root opening. So, a lot of things they do, procedures, surgical, neurosurgical procedures for pain relief. Everything has its own domain of outcomes. Okay? That particular patient which is suitable definitely will get relief. 
and spiritual it is beyond the human understanding religious practices a pastor will come and tell or uh, islam whoever is the priest and the patient will feel better you will be feeling like was i a fool treating this patient for 3 months for the pain but you remember that physical is physical psychological definitely psychological and spiritual is the boss so that you should know okay the psychological is only a personal assistant to the boss the physical is only manager assistant manager like that levels people are there so who is the ultimate boss spiritual only people are ignoring the spiritual aspects for those people psychological will help it. people who ignore the psychological also they don't bother about their mind they keep adulterating with all negative thoughts they cry for others suffering mind is very vulnerable okay you can't treat their mind only thing what you can do is treat the body understood so whoever is abusing the spiritual aspects you can't treat the spiritual aspects you might use the psychological the next level whichever we can target because if it is normal only you can make it normal totally abnormal means you need a spiritual leader for that not a physical therapist unless you are trained like that dashna okay so she has various methods or uh, practicing yoga so even if there is a t4 lower limb all this pain is there do the yoga with the upper upper half of the body anyway you are lying down in the bed if the but the for that the patient has to believe that yoga will make me better that bottom line is important if the patient feels yoga is uh, related to hinduism i am a islam i don't want to do yoga okay then whatever we teach even pranayam will worsen the condition we tell the pranayam as pranayam it will worsen the condition you tell it as a breathing exercise it will not worsen the condition okay so that is the way life goes everybody has their own belief systems right we are teaching we are providing um, uh, knowledge which is beyond what any other provider can provide in a free webinar but still so many people nobody does the certification course it is their belief system people take the free webinar means they won't do the certification course from them okay that krishna was trying that his batchmates and all should attend they are not attending even free webinars hmm? so you should think that people have their own belief system what will make them to learn what will make them to be better everybody has their own concepts learning dry needling will make them an expert that is their belief system how will you change it okay even using electrotherapy structurally electrotherapy technically is the belief system if you want to change it functionally means the therapist has to learn and upgrade the path mechanics every therapist cannot use functionally so definitely then it comes to an extra effort which everybody will not be prepared we are happy with whatever we are doing every day keep doing that why do extra if i am earning 5000 rupees today one day means if i do extra functional ultrasound means tomorrow i will be earning 10000 or what nothing say i am 5000 only then why people think money as a measure of success that is their belief system they don't see that a patient recovering a long term improvement as a outcome of your excellence so that is it's about their moral values but at the same time we should know which patients we can treat which patients it's outside our boundary and where physical aspects will have limitation where the psychological or the spiritual aspects are needed 
long term disabled people geriatric cancer palliative care all this is spiritual aspect will come there it will not at all only physical treatment i told tens for cancer pain but the same is patient is on the death bed and having cancer pain means tens will not work only prayer will work reiki will help so like that so see that and then decide that how your question can be more solution oriented rather than a problem oriented okay problem oriented reasoning will come in people whom we have the maximum control with our physical domains of treatment solution oriented comes when the people are beyond our control so what is the solution for them so that means you know, what is the thing that they feel that it is a problem so that is the eliminate that only is the solution for them understood right yes sir yes sir so we close the session yes sir and see that okay abdul has copy pasted the question mm -hmm. right so stop the recording